Hello everyone. Now I will explain how the experimental observations enable us to write the Coulomb's law in the vector form. Now what is the point to be noted now is that these experimental observations we would like to transform or convert into a suitable mathematical expression. The Coulomb's law itself requires only two of the charges. That is the point number A. This point number B here, the word between can be modified like this. The force is acting on the second charge because of the presence of first charge. That is option 1. Option 2 is force acting on the first charge Q1 because of the presence of second charge. Like that you can write. So if you write this between in these two forms, then you get some idea about the direction. It's clear that it is uh, the force is acting from where to where. So you must be able to feel this. So from Q1 to Q2, that is the meaning of force acting on Q2 due to Q1. Due to Q1 means that is the starting place. So here also you can write 2 here. So now what happened is that the word between can be slightly modified and then we are now getting an idea that there are two possible ways of getting direction. So the direction can be from 1 to 2 or it can be from 2 to 1. So both the directions are now possible. Now these directions can be now transformed into a vector because vector is a mathematical quantity that will have an ability to show the direction. Scalar doesn't have that capability. We will come to the point number C, D, E next. First let us finish the concept of this vector. So let me just go down in the board. So let us now consider that you have some coordinates here. Up to Q1 you have to draw. So let if I draw this, that line will correspond to R1 vector, R2. So you have to give the names. Let us say that we give the names R1 for the distance from the origin to the point Q1. So 1 can be a point number 1. 1 means point number 1. Let me write 2 here. 2 means point number 2. Now on the point number 2 you have the charge Q2. So that is the meaning. So this one let me write down that this is called point 2 at which place charge Q2 is placed. Connect the two charges Q1 and Q2 with one more line. Now after finishing this you have some options. Now you ask the question how to put the direction? Shall I put the direction from 1 to 2 or should I put the direction from 2 to 1? So if it is Q1 to Q2, how do you draw the arrow? So the arrow has to be drawn like this. So now finally what you have is you have a triangle. So then what happens we will see. So let me erase this portion. And we will say that this is a script R. So this is the script R that we use. So I will write down here. So the idea is that we have to keep some meaning for some kind of letters then it will be easier for easy for us to work with uh, equations. You need a unit vector now that is why I am writing this. Okay, the next point comes into picture now. How do you calculate unit vector? Divide this quantity by its modulus. So what is the modulus? This is the modulus of A. If you divide this whatever comes there would be a unit vector. So we can now put a cap here. So this is the way you convert a standard vector to a unit vector. So this is the unit vector for R. This is first thing. Second thing is still we have not calculated this script R. So therefore let us calculate the script R using the triangle law of addition. So to explain the triangle law of addition, first I will draw one triangle. So you are choosing some direction and then we are writing ABC vector. And if it is the case, how do you write the triangle? law and this way if you write this is known as the vector addition rule on triangle so that gives you c vector is equal to a minus b so let us use this idea to the triangle that we have in our problem so that is the triangle we have and that's all Okay, now we have this uh, expression for the script R. So whatever calculation that you have done right now is valid only for this configuration. That means for the force from point number 1 to point number 2, only for that this expression is valid. Now you can write down the Coulomb's law. So distance between Q1 and Q2 is given by 
this is script r and therefore naturally script r square is only correct the other options are wrong therefore we will now write down that this is script r square that is a magnitude so magnitude is correct what about direction so that that particular direction is this one so i am highlighting this direction now you must be able to see the highlighted direction okay so there is a highlight now so that is the direction in which the force is going to act so that unit vector now you have to attach here here you have to attach and if you do this on the right hand side you have a vector quantity now you put the vector here so this form of equation that is written like this is the vector form of the coulomb's law suppose if you don't want a script r if you want to express everything in terms of the usual r1 and r2 then this has to be rewritten so that is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 then you have a q1 multiplied by q2 divided by and remember that this is a scalar therefore we have to write modulus and what is the value of the script r that you should know so that is calculated just here you know, here it is there so let me put a tick here this is the equation that you have to use so script r is given by r2 minus r1 so write that this is r2 minus r1 and then modulus modulus means you are taking the uh, what do you call the scalar product of the vector i hope you understand why scalar product is coming are you able to understand so suppose i have a vector a i have a vector i want cal so then the question is that calculate modulus of a square how will you calculate calculate this answer is this answer is very simple if you want to calculate the modulus of a square what all you have to do is take the a vector and take the dot product with a vector this is called a self dot product and that's all you have to do so take the dot product you will be getting this so in this case in our case this is r2 minus r1 so what basically you are doing is i am taking an r2 minus r1 vector and then i am taking a dot product with once again r2 minus r1 that's all if you do this whatever you are getting is known as r2 minus r1 modulus square that is the meaning of this so when you have a modulus here remember that you are taking a simple dot product of the same vector so therefore that completes this script r square no script r is removed if you remove the script r here what happens to the unit vector the unit vector also will become r2 minus r1 unit vector that's what you have to write down here so i'll be writing r2 minus r1 now unit vector has to be drawn little bigger because it is occupying this much space is this point is clear so this portion will erase here some space i need Okay, this is important r2 minus 1 you should not write like this r2 unit vector minus r1 unit vector no don't write like this this is wrong this is wrong okay so what is correct is this one is correct r2 minus r1 r2 minus r1 is a single vector remember they are not two vectors r2 minus r1 you already simplified and you got a single vector and for that you have to calculate the unit vector how do you calculate that calculation uh, five minutes back we have seen that is here here it is there this is the one i am talking about this one so how do you write this that means this is equal to this means r2 minus r1 this unit vector gives you r2 minus r1 the normal vector divided by here you see modulus of that is the length of r2 minus r1 that's all it means so it may be looking little you know lengthy expression but however numerically these things are very simple when you are taking a numerical problem and solving your job is only to find out the unit vector of a given vector but because r2 minus r1 is there it looks a little lengthier expression so this expression and this expression are both are same okay so hopefully you can easily understand what is the expression that you have written so this is what you are going to use it for r2 minus r1 so we have now substituted that here yeah here it is there r2 minus r1 so the unwanted things uh, let me erase now so this is the 
this is the final result that we are talking about namely the coulomb's law in the vector form but the important point you have to remember is that the important point is you have to tell what is the direction of the force in terms of a sentence so we say that this is from q1 to q2 because that is all this calculation you have done only for this configuration as it is shown in this diagram here there is a highlight right yellow color highlight so only for this configuration you have done suppose if you want to do this configuration for here you have to attach a minus sign to that and that's all you have to do so ultimately you got an expression like this so i will highlight this particular portion namely the r1 or r2 minus r1 portion so this is the portion you have to be careful about this and then there is a unit vector here so this is one main conclusion so where is the what is our starting point let us see the starting point so this is our starting point that we are interested to uh, study the point a b c d e etc so in that point number a you started and that's fine point number b b you come you have completed you know okay what do you completed means what the you understood what is the direction of the force from the point number b and point number c d e they all come together so they are not big thing c d e it is a well known thing to you if the two charges are positive you know that it is repulsive if two charges are negative you know that once again it is repulsive and the last option is one charge positive and another charge negative then you have an attractive force now the question is these three english sentences has to be converted to a mathematical expression how do you do and that's what we are going to see now so that is quite simple as we will write down now now how do you write repulsive force as an equation then we are going to say that then we are going to define that the repulsive force is greater than 0 so that means if you write this this kind of a condition your point number c is over if you take one plus charge and if you take another minus charge experiment says that it is attractive so mathematically you write down then i must get a attractive force so what do you mean by attractive force f less than 0 is attractive so which means that it it so happens that nicely everything is has, has been taken into consideration from the point number a to the last point whatever is known experimentally is now observable in the form of equation so this this change from here to here that is this here which i am talking about is not a simple thing it 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 has a lot of implication as a it has a lot of consequence you will be able to understand it okay so coming to the uh, point so just to remember that our starting point i mean our objective of the today's class is to write the coulomb's law in the vector form and that we have done here we have explained what is meant by unit vector and we have also written the coulomb for, uh, law in the proper vector form the first point that you need to know is that i'll write down the point number a instead of a square you can write it as a cube how you can increase the power is that by writing this power 2 to power 3 we can now get rid of this unit vector it becomes an ordinary vector that means you simply write down instead of uh, instead of putting any hat there you completely remove the hat and write down that this is r2 minus r1 vector so now the unit vector has disappeared so by removing this you have to put a power here you can always convert the unit vector to the standard vector so i am putting the direction see this direction so this is the direction of conversion unit vector to the standard vector so if you want to convert a unit vector to the standard vector then what all you have to do is you have to divide by the modulus of that vector that is what you have to do so already you have a modulus of this quantity to the power 2 there is a square if you bring one more one more division like this that becomes power 3 so people prefer sometimes it is preferable there is nothing special in this the equation number the original equation that you have let us say i will write that this is your equation number 1 and equation number 2 they are identically same so equation number 1 is identically same as equation number 2 but why some people write like this is sometimes it is useful to avoid this hat here wide hat you did not draw so that means you can avoid the calculation of unit vector 
so i am stressing this particular point because you remember that the coulomb's law is actually inverse square law if it is inverse square law how can you put a 3 here that doubt will come so there is no doubt here these are equivalent this additional power comes because of the conversion of the unit vector to the standard vector therefore this equation number 2 maybe this 3 is also inverse square law only so that will not change so this is also inverse square law only so you cannot change the name so this is the important uh, point because some books will have at the power 3 so sometimes you may get a confusion so that confusion is now clarified so i think with this we will stop here we will think about another topic in the next class maybe a problem solving or we can discuss about what do you mean by electric field that we will do in the next class